Hey, hello and welcome back to another video where we look at some of the new applications and features that have been included in the latest DSM beta, DSM 7.2. We've already talked about a few things already on the channel in the last few days and today I want to kind of zoom in a little bit more onto that write once, read many or worm support that's been added. Now, quick few disclaimers straight off the bat. If you don't already know, DSM 7.2, the beta is now available. The link to it should be in the description below as well as a link to my own article where I've gone through a lot more detail on the kind of bells, the whistles, the good, the bad, and adding an update in that quite regularly there. But do bear in mind that uh, support of write once, read many, or worm, as we're going to continue to call it in this video, is not it's not available to all devices. Not only is it not available in any version of DSM lower than 7.2, but on top of that, it's not even available on some of the systems in that lineup. For example, if you're running an ARM ARM-based processor like the Realtek RTD uh, 1619 in the new DS223, unfortunately. There is no support of write once, read many on that system. Ignore the degraded state there. That's just when we were using it in uh, an encrypted volume video. But right now, if you try to go uh, and create uh, a new write once, read many supported shared folder, the option is not available. So again, if we just type in any old nonsense there, click next, it's normally going to be here. But you can encrypt it, but you can't enable write once read mini there. So do bear in mind that it's not for all systems and that it is currently in beta. And therefore, I do not recommend installing it on any NAS that's utilizing uh, kind of mission critical data or is 24 7. And also that it can't be applied retroactively. So you can't apply it to your existing subset of folders there. So for example, on this DS920 here, if we go into the shared folder area and we look at some of our other shared folders, such as the multimedia folder here, we can go to edit and then we can go to encryption, but we can't apply, uh, at least at the time of recording, uh, support of write once support there uh, from DSM 7.2. This is only for newly created shared folders there. But that's enough of the disclaimers. Let's crack on straight with it. First and foremost, who is uh, Write Once Read Many actually targeted at? Who's going to use Worm? Well, nice and simple, this is about having long-term data storage that you either simply never want changed or that for legal reasons you need to maintain and hold on for, if not indefinitely, then certainly for a long period of time. And you can't risk losing that data. Now, obviously, things like backups, redundancy, um, uh, snapshots, kind of off-site replication, all of these things allow you to make sure that you don't lose your data if your system breaks, but very few of these things will save you, at least directly, if all those systems are still running in the background, if you overwrite an existing file. Yes, there's retention policies and revisions that you can roll through, but even then, they have a certain period of support. You may have them on 30 days, and it's a file that was changed and you didn't realize for more than a month. So in those scenarios where you've got lots of users accessing data at the same time, it's good to know that you can create a system where data can be written to an area of storage, again, shared folders, but it can't be deleted or altered, although it can be uh, added to, you know, long term. And for those of you with legal responsibilities for compliance within your business, this may be very, very beneficial to you. So that's who Worm is for. And arguably, it's a little bit overdue that Synology have added it now. This is a feature that a lot of us would have hoped they would have added at the initial uh, uh, kind of reveal of DSM-7 right the way back in 2020. So having a look at my notes there. Let's go ahead and have a look at just what these things actually look like. So again, we'll make our way into the file station area here. We've got these shared folders. And as you can see there on the left hand side, some of these folders have got right once badged on top of them. I've created two different kinds um, of um, worm supported shared folder there. I'll go into that in a little more detail later on. But from there, all of that, it doesn't look any different to a normal file and folder, does it? Indeed, if you make your way into uh, your PC, if you've added them, or your Mac system, and you've bolted on Mac drives, they even appear just like any other drive. They're there, there's all the data inside, I can go in, have a look at the contents of those files and folders. So why is that so different to use Worm? Well, it's because altering those files, so for example, if we go into that shared folder there that's inside one of them, let's make sure we select the, create the right one. As you can see there, we've got Worm support there. And what we're going to do is just flat out take one of these files. We're going to take this one here. We're going to right click 
and we're just going to edit that file. We're going to totally destroy the file, in fact. Um, if we choose to, we're just going to let uh, paint.net open up there. And nice and simple, all we're going to do is select all. We're going to let that open there on screen. Give it a moment because we're running on battery power. We're just going to delete the entire content of that picture there. We're going to erase it. And then we're going to try to save this file. And as you can see, it's going to start trying to save but we've hit an I.O. error. That took slightly longer, uh, I believe, there at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to kind of up the battery usage. But as you can see there, there at the bottom, it's hitting an error trying to save that file. We can try it again. We can try and change the format, perhaps. And if we change the format, we'll create a new version of that file. But we're trying to save this file in its original form. You can see the system will not allow it. And that is thanks to write once, read many. As you can see, the file is absolutely fine. If we refresh that, it's not going anywhere. What if we delete? Let's delete that file. As you can see, the file disappears. Refresh that folder, the file comes back. What if we want to delete a bunch of files? Let's delete all of these. We'll delete those six files. Delete them from the screen. Again, refresh the folder the files are still there. And again, while we're doing all of this, we can access that same file folder all in there on the NAS. Now, it's worth highlighting that there are different privileges and rules to write once, read many, some of which will be very important that you set up correctly from the outset. So for example, you can set it that only admins can change those. So you can set it up that sub-users have got no way to delete files, but admin users can. You can also set it up that once a file is created, it can never be deleted for an indefinite period of time. Or you can create files that for an extended period of time of predefined length can be altered and amended, but then after that point, nothing can be done about them. So let's actually look at the application and creation of some of these worm-enabled shared folders. So you can get to it two ways. You can go into the control panel if you choose, and then go into shared folders there. Or if you like, you can go directly into the file structure here and create a new shared folder, which will then open up the shared folder menu here. So let's create a new one here. We're going to call this one YouTube Share while we're watching it. Um, again, from there, we'll give it a description if we choose. Select which volume we want to use. As you can see, I've already created an encrypted volume here from a previous video. So what the hell? Let's use an encrypted volume. And again, as mentioned in my DSM overview, you can enable a recycle bin, but its um, abilities and the extent to which it can be used will be completely overwritten by Worm. So I'll leave it enabled for now, but you'll see why that's completely immaterial in a bit. As you can see, this new option has appeared. Uh, to create a write once uh, read many supported shared folder from there as you can see it's disabling that uh, recycle bin because that is counter to the whole concept of worm and then we have the choice of the different application modes and as mentioned there is one mode for enterprise mode where only system admin enabled users can affect change or deletion on those files or you can select compliance mode. So I'm just gonna walk you through enterprise mode first, and then at the end, I'll show you some of the options in compliance to give you some understanding about the long-term commitment of compliance and something very important about you and your system. But for now, if we select enterprise mode, you can see we have several options open. Auto lock, as mentioned earlier on, is when a file, if it is not accessed or changed for an indefinite, uh, for a defined period of time, then it will auto lock afterwards. You can choose for files to be willy nilly do what you want for a certain period of time. Or if you don't choose that option, lock will be applied. So, for example, if we go for the auto lock there, as you can see for that predefined period, so we'll set that to two hours there and then the retention policy of that file for a certain period of time as well. This is how long that file will be non-removable from. But again, bear in mind, the overwriting privilege of an admin will take effect if you're selecting enterprise mode rather than compliance there. Also, the lock state is important too. Immutable is a word that Synology is really, really in love with at the moment and so is the industry. That is basically creating a file where nothing can remove it. It is non changeable it is the original format it is readable it cannot be amended whereas an append mode means things can be added to the file but the original state of the file cannot be changed there is a breakdown there on the side 
and ultimately everything I've said to you will be defined there on the side of the screen for you to know pretty much what's going on. But for now, if we go with that auto lock period there of two hours and then the retention policy of years, and again, you can set it to days or years if you choose. So say you want to keep it for seven days um, on there, which would be weird. Go ahead, select next, and then you can carry on with the shared folder creation just like you would any other shared folder. And again, checksums, all of these are fairly standard concepts within the Synology makeup there. From this point, we can then say who's got access to this, just like we would any shared folder. But bear in mind that the read-write privileges you are giving users will be overpowered by the worm access there. So if we choose to give a non-admin user access to that file of read write bear in mind that that does not supersede the write once read many that we've created up to this point so we enable those there give everyone access to the file and there you go we've now created that enterprise mode worm shared folder for you there so that is not unlike some of the ones we've created but what of that compliance mode if we create that new shared folder there and this one we'll call this one no delete from there, we'll disable the recycle bin this time. Again, give it right once. And this time, we select compliance mode. Now, we're not going to follow this through because this is a NAS and a drives that I use for other videos. But I think it's really important to understand what are the core differences. As you can see, everything seems largely the same. And then when we click next, the system warns us. Now, what it's warning us of is this. At this point, if you proceed with this, you are never going to be able to remove that file without removing the drive and formatting it externally. If you try to reinstate the system, I doubt that even then you will be able to delete this file. This will prevent you from doing anything to delete the volume or shared pool overall, not shared pool, uh, storage pool overall. So just know that by going down this road, you are creating an area of storage in your system that is unremovable, which might be music to the ears of a lot of users out there who are looking for a storage system where they're having those archival backups of you know, employee information, insurance information, legal documents. That's fantastic. But just bear in mind that unless you have, in the previous pages, um, created uh, retention policies and time policies that allow you after a given period of time of say six legal years to delete those that data you may be creating a rod for your own back and that's why they really go out of their way to say are you absolutely sure you want to do this so what if you want to review some of these policies make changes how can you find out this information about the length of the retention of those files now at the moment there isn't too much change at least on the client side uh, of things with Synology's tools but within the web browser if you go to any of these files such as going in there with that retention policy we went through earlier on and we can right click and there's a couple of new contextual options first and foremost there's the right once extra one there that allows you if you're outside of the time manage lock policy to immediately lock the drive if you choose if you've got some of those settings you can go ahead and amend them from within the shared um, folder uh, area there while going into an existing shared folder there that has got right once enabled and allows you to change some of those periods there. But the amount of options you have within file management, both on the browser side there that you're seeing on the screen accessing DSM or on the local side of it here, the amount of information, at least at the time of recording, is not quite as extensive. And although you can find out some background information there, as you can see, read-only attributes and more have not been uh, applied and passed through to the window, something that I think will change later on. If we right-click that file once again, what we can do in that context menu is to extend the retention policy if we choose. So as you can see there with that retention policy, you can add extra time, you can lock it forever if you choose, and you can make some of those amendments. But bear in mind, you have to be an admin user in order to change some of those policies. And indeed, if you go to the properties section itself and go to the right once tab, from there you can find out the current status of that worm locking policy on that file there. So overall, that is the worm support on the Synology um, DSM 7.2 beta. I like what I'm seeing. The extent to which it's going to be um, rolled out into other client applications, I've still yet to see. There is mention, if you go into the beta documentation, 
of its support within the sand manager so if we go down to the sand manager there support of worm being carried over into that is beginning how much of that is being transferred over into drive an area where i would really like to see worm support you know properly integrated we'll have to wait and see but you can add existing shared folders into your range of supported folders from within Synology Drive quite easily, which then in turn allows you to maintain the worm support. But I hope some contextual menus and configuration do carry over to Synology Drive there because for those of you that are running editing suites, they want to be able to access catalogs of photos and videos and then edit them locally but not change the original file, but add newer versions to that without you know the original archive being altered too much. A lot of those users also integrate Drive into their workflows. So I think it'd be really interesting to see more context for worm support within Synology Drive as well as other applications too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this overview. Again, this is at the beta stage of DSN 7.2 and I'm sure this application is only going to get bigger and better over time and I hopefully you'll see that too. Thank you so much for watching. We will be trying to review all of the new innovations within DSM 7.2, the things we like, the things we don't like and ultimately where we'd like to see them improve when they get to alpha, uh, not into alpha, into release candidates and hopefully out there for everyone. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Use the links in the description to other beta applications we've talked about and the free advice sections over on NAS Compares. And I will see you next time.